welcome to analysis of biology question paper uh, as every time in case of every analysis we are discussing that uh, you have to first solve the question paper which is available on our youtube channel that is savarkar ias study circle so you have to verify you have to solve that question paper first and then uh, you have to observe uh, or rather we have to go through this uh, answer and analysis lecture so uh, let us start uh, as usual i will read first question and then we will discuss about answer so question number 1 which pair or pairs is are correctly match typhoid salmonella typhi malaria plasmodium ebola mycobacterium ebola scurvy mycobacterium scurvy scurvy uh, options a 1 and 2 b 2 and 3 c 3 and 4 and option d all four uh now here we can check clearly that uh, typhoid that is a bacterial disease caused by salmonella typhi so this pair is correctly match now malaria that is because of plasmodium no no varieties are there plasmodium vivax plasmodium falciparum like that but plasmodium yeah this is protozoal disease plasmodium belonging to a uh, category that is called as protozoa and in phycogenome system it is called as protista now uh, ebola ebola is a viral disease virus name is only ebola and so that mycobacterium ebola is not existing yet and uh, scurvy that is the deficiency disease this happens because of deficiency of ascorbic acid in body that is also called as vitamin c so because of deficiency of vitamin c scurvy occurs so 3 and 4 are not correctly match whereas 1 and 2 they are correctly match and therefore answer is a again same question which pair pairs is are matched correctly now thiamine b1 riboflavin b2 niacin b3 pantothenic acid b5 options a 1 2 b 2 3 c 3 4 and d all four so here all four is right option so answer is d third question which statements are true so one gastric juice contains hcl that is hydrochloric acid two bile juice is produced in liver three pepsinogen is converted into pepsin which is an enzyme for the digestion of protein fourth carbohydrates are digested as a glucose or similar monomer in human digestion option a 1 and 2 option b 2 and 3 option c 3 and 4 option d all four so let us check uh, gastric juice contains hcl yeah this is important part of gastric juice which is secreted by gastric glands present in the stomach so first is a mucus secretion second is hydrochloric acid which is very very concentrated approximately 10% concentrated hydrochloric acid that is there Uh, in our stomach, uh, mucus secretion is there to control that. That's why uh, in that HCl, our stomach cells are not digested because uh, mucus secretion is covering out the, uh, this uh, stomach. And then that pepsinogen, trypsinogen, like that, some enzymes they are secreted uh, there only in gastric juice. Bile juice is produced in liver when RBCs. that is red blood corpuscles they have lifespan of approximately 100 days 
uh, in some book it is mentioned as 90 days, some book they are mentioning 120 days, we can consider as around 100 days. When they are destroyed, they are taken to the spleen, one of the organ on the intestine that is called as spleen. So their uh, RBCs are going to spleen. Then spleen is something like uh, we are saying scrap house where useful component of RBCs are taken and which is not useful that is sent to liver. In liver, uh, this waste material is converted into a yellow colored liquid that is called as bile juice. In Sanskrit language, this is called as pitta ras. Pitta means yellow colored. So the juice which is having yellow color. So this way it is produced and it is stored temporarily in the gallbladder. So uh, bile juice is produced in liver. This option is also true. Pepsinogen is converted into pepsin, which is an enzyme for digestion of protein. Yeah, this is also true. Pepsinogen. So pepsin is generated from pepsinogen. So this is there in our stomach. But uh, because in stomach pH is acidic and therefore it is inactive. It is just mixed thoroughly there. Carbohydrates are digested as a glucose or similar monomer in human digestion. This is also true. The, that is absorbed in form of glucose. Uh, Sometimes fructose is also there which is converted into glucose. And we are getting this type of uh, glucose formation which is absorbed in bloodstream. So all four statements are true. That means answer is D. Fourth question, how many statements are true? Human heart is fourth chambered. Frog is having three chambered heart. Birds have four chambered heart. Pulmonary artery uh, carries deoxygenated blood. Let us check one by one. Human heart is four chambered. Answer is true. Uh, in case of mammals, heart is four chambered. Frog is having three chambered heart. This is also true. Uh, the ventricles. Uh, in case of human, they are uh, lower uh, right ventricle and left ventricle. But in case of frog, there is no septum between right ventricle and left ventricle. So blood directly flows from uh, atriole or uh, say auricle directly enters in uh, and mix in the ventricle. So we are having, uh, uh, in case of human being, we are having oxygenated blood separate and deoxygenated blood separate. But in case of frog, uh, as there is no septum in ventricle, both blood that is oxygenated as well as deoxygenated mixed out. But another thing is that in case of frog, there is cutaneous respiration also. Cutaneous means through skin. Obviously, I must uh, thankful to that person who is able to say skin of frog as cute, cutaneous. So uh, frog is having three chambered heart. True. Birds have four chambered heart. Yeah. Because birds require tremendous energy. It is the anti-gravity work. No doubt, maximum birds are floating out. They are gliding out. But yet, to take off, the birds require tremendous energy. And therefore, uh, their heart is four-chambered heart. So this statement is also true. Otherwise, minimum, uh, maximum things, in case of birds, they are having similar with reptiles. Pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood. So in case of human being, this is obviously we have to consider in case of human being. Pulmonary artery, uh, that is artery which takes blood from heart to lungs, that carries deoxygenated blood. And a pulmonary vein, that means vein which carries blood from lungs to heart, that carries oxygenated blood. So here only data is reversed. So, uh, all four statements are true. So option is D. Now question is comparatively simple. Total number of occipital bones in human body is. If you have studied then this question is very very easy. You are aware occipital bone that is towards back side of our skull. Uh, that is uh, we can say ventral side towards little bit ventral side and back side of our skull. The bone is there, cranium rather, the bone is there that is called as occipital or occipital bone. So in case of occipital bone, how many uh, in case of uh, human, 
how many occipital bones are there so as there is only one skull there is one occipital bone only in one skull and therefore uh, answer is one but this question will be difficult if you have not studied out the names if you don't know then sixth question which of the following products are or may obtained in anaerobic respiration let me clarify we are solving this question paper in 2024 and uh, at the most i have knowledge that is not extreme advanced knowledge okay because uh, whatever the research work is going on that should enter in our syllabus then only we are able to answer so with our knowledge the answer is uh, let me clarify first question and then answer but may be possible in future or right now also it may be possible but it is not there in syllabus accordingly we have to answer uh, which of the following products are or may obtain in anaerobic respiration so first one is acetic acid second one is lactic acid third is ethyl alcohol fourth is ascorbic acid and options given that is 1 2 2 3 1 2 3 and all four uh, let us check acetic acid yeah it is called as vinegar so it is uh, one of the product uh, that is carried out in fermentation and uh, particularly anaerobic respiration lactic acid this is also produced uh, in human muscles only this can be produced if anaerobic respiration is forcefully carried out by muscles that is in lack of oxygen condition then ethyl alcohol you are aware this is best fermentation product and uh, last ascorbic acid is vitamin c it is particularly obtained from fruits of citrus family and it is not fermentation product so answer is 1 2 3 seventh question what is or are the facts about quantasome have you heard this word quantasome those who have studied out biology they are aware of quantasomes they are present in chromosomes uh, sorry uh, they are present in chlorophyll particularly chloroplast so in case of chloroplast these quantasomes are there so quantasomes are particles found in a thylakoid membrane of chloroplast in which a uh, photosynthesis takes place first statement second statement uh, they are embedded in paracrystalline array on the surface of thylakoid discs in chloroplast third they are composed of lipids and proteins that include various photosynthetic pigments and redox carriers last they are present in rbc so uh, here as they are present in chloroplast they are not present in rbc so according to answer fourth option is not valid immediately we can know now think of all remaining three options and they are two so here answer is 1 2 3 so you have to go by option c that is 1 2 3 human zygote eighth question human zygote is having dash dash number of chromosomes zygote is a first cell form or rather uh, the cell formed after fusion of male gamete and female gamete now gametes in case of human they are haploid haploid means they are having half number of chromosomes so in case of human body 46 chromosomes are there so here in sperm and ovum 23 23 but after formation of zygote the number become 46 so here uh, right answer is 46 chromosomes ninth question pollen grains from a tall pea plant they are crossed with dwarf pea plant 50% of f1 generation obtained is tall and 50% is dwarf the genotype of the tall pea plant should be now uh, as we are indicating here a tall plant tall plant may have genotype as capital t capital t or small t small uh, capital t small t but when i am talking of dwarf plant in case of dwarf plant 
it is as a dwarf place is recessive character here in case of pea plant. So here dwarf place is uh, represented by small t small t. Let us check. Suppose first option is there, then gametes will be capital T capital T. Here the gametes will be small t small t, and this will be the F1 generation. So capital T small t means tall plant. Capital T small t tall plant. Capital T small t small, tall plant, and capital T small t tall plant. Because uh, that is the dominant. So here F1 generation phenotype will be all top. So you should get 100% top. So this is not the genotype. Then try this way. I will show in other color, red color. I will show here. So uh, these are the gametes. We can check capital T small t. Again tall plant. Capital T. Uh, sorry. Capital T, small t. Again, tall plant. Then small t, small t. Dwarf plant. Small t, small t. Dwarf plant. So here we will get clearly 50% uh, tall plants and 50% dwarf plant. And therefore, uh, the genotype of tall t plant should be. So that is capital T, small t. So A is right answer. Last example of hermaphrodite animal is option A, whale, B, oyster, C, peacock, and D, liger. Now, what is hermaphrodite animal? If you are aware of this term, then only we can answer. Here, hermaphrodite means uh, that animal can't be distinguished as male or female because both reproductive organs are present on the same animal. Then uh, that is called as hermaphrodite. So here uh, you will check only oyster is the answer. So oyster uh, is hermaphrodite. Both male and female organs are present in the same oyster. So we can't say that oyster is male or oyster is female. So other all they have male and female separate. In case of liger also, liger is a hybrid of tiger and lion or other. Uh, they say lion and tiger that's why it is called as liger uh, which is not reproducible so uh, answer is oyster so b is right answer